We're going to continue to expose the harlot of the book of Revelation and show you that it's first century Jerusalem. No, it's not the Roman Catholic Church. It's not a future one world church. People fail to look and correspond to the rest of the Bible when they read Revelation 17 and seek to find out who the harlot of Revelation actually is. We showed you that Revelation 18 and 24 said that inside the harlot was the blood, all the blood shed on the earth and the blood of prophets. Jesus said in Matthew 23 that all the blood shed on the earth was going to be required at the head of Jerusalem. And Jesus also said it's not possible for a prophet to perish outside Jerusalem. And so he said in two points of Revelation 18 and 24, things that directly pointed to Jerusalem when Revelation talks about the harlot. And we see Mike Bloom makes a very bold statement when he says that Jerusalem is a harlot and not the Roman Catholic Church. For years it has been the Roman Catholic Church who teaches that Jerusalem was a harlot and not them. And so I'm surprised to hear this from Protestants or ministers that are Christian. Uh, but I'm going to give you some points that I believe will destroy the preterist teaching uh, like Mike Bloom and so many others are doing and the Roman Catholic Church keeps doing to this very day. And, and the very strong point that I would like to point out is that Mike Bloom teaches that Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, thus fulfilling what uh, Revelation 18 teaches. But here's the thing. The, the, the Bible says that uh, Jerusalem still stands to this very day and is favored by God. And, and at the same time, the Babylon, when Babylon is destroyed, it becomes a habitation of devils. So my question to you is, is Jerusalem today a habitation of devils? The answer is no. Uh, and the Bible says, come out of her, my people. And does the Bible, is the Bible telling us to have nothing to do with Jerusalem? Especially after 70 AD, she's still alive and she's still growing. And many flock over to Jerusalem by the millions to see the testimony of Jesus Christ. And as at any time the Jerusalem said, I sit a queen and am not a widow. No, the answer is no. And also the Bible says that all the nations were deceived by her sorceries. The Jerusalem practiced sorceries and has she deceived all the nations or just some? But the main point is this. The Bible says in Revelation 18.21, This city shall be found no more at all. In other words, it's going to be totally wiped out and it will never exist again. This is not what happened with Jerusalem. Jerusalem is still alive and well and people are still believing and going to visit the site where Jesus rose from the dead. And the sorceries deceived all the nations which I mentioned what sorcery is the Jerusalem practice? We actually get the gospel from there. We get the, the, the New Testament. It's, it's completely found in Jerusalem and all about. Jesus preached in Jerusalem. So what sorceries are found in Jerusalem that deceive all the nations? There is no such thing. I showed you how all through Ezekiel chapter 16, he's called calling Jerusalem the harlot and a whorish, imperious woman over and over and over again. He talks about committing fornication. In Revelation 17, they committed, the harlot committed fornication with the kings of the earth. Well, in Acts chapter 4, it interprets the kings of the earth, Rome, Pontius Pilate, and the Gentiles getting together with Herod, Israel, and the Jews together in one group. And there's the fornication with the kings of the earth. And that was in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 4, when they were being persecuted by the Jews and by the Romans and, and had a prayer meeting after Peter and John healed the man at the gate. And when Mike Bloom mentions Ezekiel 16, Ezekiel 23 and 24, he tries to put those verses with the verses in Revelation, but they don't go together. Uh, 
in Ezekiel 16, even though God is condemning Jerusalem, he says that he will not he will establish his covenant with with them. Even after all the bad things that they were doing, God said he would still be with them. And then in Ezekiel 23, uh, Jerusalem commits uh, fornication, uh, whoredom, with the Babylonians, first of all. So it doesn't refer to Jerusalem as Babylon, but, it re but here it says that Jerusalem had uh, fornication, adultery, uh, harlotry with the Babylonians. Historicism, you're wrong. <laughs> I say that with humility. Uh, futurism, you're wrong. You see, futurism and historicism have one common denominator of a problem. They're looking at what happened to them in their day, and then they think the whole Bible refers to that. Now, futurism restricts everything to our generation right now. It seems like the pattern of futurism is whatever generation you're in, whatever atrocities happening, whatever persecutions happening, Revelation's talking about that. And then 10 years later, something else happens. Revelation's talking about that. And, and it changes. It's so fluid. And historicists, the only consistency really there is, is they say it's just the Roman Catholic Church. And historicism came about when the Roman Catholic Church was persecuting a lot of believers that weren't Roman Catholic. And so they did the same mistake. What was going on in their day, that pointed to them. But here this view is consistently showing you it's first century Jerusalem and the early church. You see, Revelation is a changeover from covenants, from old to new. And it's just like the rest of the New Testament. It's talking like Paul did about how the Jews resisted the new covenant and how that there had to be a lot of teaching about coming into the new covenant, how the Gentiles are in there. Well, the people of Jerusalem cried out to Pilate, his blood, Jesus' blood, be on them and their children. And Jesus picked up on that even before they said it, when he was carrying his cross up to Mount Golgotha to be crucified, and the women were weeping for him. And he said, don't weep for me. Weep for you and your children, because you folks are going to cry for the rocks and mountains to cover you. And that's what Verse 30 to 31. I will do these things unto thee, because thou hast gone a-whoring after the heathen. And because thou art polluted with their idols, thou hast walked in the way of thy sister. Therefore will I give her cup into thine hand. You're seeing so many things now from the book of Revelation. And it's talking about Jerusalem. She had a golden cup in her hand. It's the cup of wrath. And then in verse 32, Thus saith the Lord God, thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup deep and large. Look at the emphasis upon drinking this cup. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn and had in derision. It containeth much. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness. There you go. Jerusalem, out in plain language, having a cup and getting drunk with it. And that's what you see in Revelation 17. And it's talking about her fornication with, with Babylon and so forth. There it is in Revelation 17 and 2. Drunk with the wine of her fornication and he carried me away in the spirit. Into the wilderness I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Where did she get it? Ezekiel 16 says that was the jewelry God gave her. Having a golden cup in her hand. Just like Ezekiel 23 is telling us. Full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And it says the blood of saints made this woman drunk. And she was intoxicated and drunk, exactly what you're seeing in Ezekiel 23. And even though in all these chapters, Jerusalem is called a harlot, it never says that she is the mother of harlots. It never says that she is a, the, the great whore or the mother of harlots or Mystery Babylon. Never says such a thing. Uh, but it does say... Uh, something very powerful and that is that God forgave her and gave Jerusalem a chance and I put in my comments the Jerusalem or the, if Jerusalem was the harlot does she have a sister in Revelation because Samaria was her sister in harlotry and whoredom in those chapters that Mike Bloom mentions but in Revelation there's no sister uh, on the contrary, it says that she sits a queen and is no widow.
and sorrow, it says in chapter 23, verse 33, thou shalt be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation, with the cup of thy sister Samaria. Thou shalt even drink it and suck it out, and thou shalt break the sherds thereof, pluck off thine own breast, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. That is the cup of God's wrath, and she's drunk with the blood of the saints because Having shed the saint's blood and having it upon her head, drinking it, that is meat for God's wrath to come against her. And then when you go down to verse 44, Yet they went in unto her as they go in unto a woman that playeth the harlot. Who? Judah, Israel, Jerusalem, God's people. This is saying the exact same thing as Revelation. So, Went they in unto Ahola and unto Aholaba, the lewd women. God called these two women harlots. And in verses 45 to 47, And the righteous men, they shall judge them after the manner of adulteresses. See, playing the whore as an adulteress because she's married to God. And after the manner of women that shed blood because they are adulteresses and blood is in their hands. For thus saith the Lord, I will bring up a company upon them, and I will give them to be removed and spoiled. That's the Romans. And the company shall stone them with stones, catapults through rocks and boulders into the city when they finally destroyed it. Dispatch them with their swords. They shall slay their sons and their daughters and burn up their houses with fire. Did that already happen? Oh, yes, it happened. It happened exactly like you're reading it. In chapter 24 now, we also read this in verses 9 and 10. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city! I will even make the pile for fire great. And he already identified the a bloody city as Israel and Jerusalem. Heap on wood, kindle the fire, consume the flesh, and spice it well, and let the bones be burned. Notice that it's finally going to be burned. And at the end of Revelation 17. It is true that Jerusalem was involved with the killing of many prophets and so forth. But to say that she is responsible for all the, the blood of all these people is wrong. Because there is one religion that oversees or completely demolishes Jerusalem and teaches you that she is the whore of Babylon because it says that the, the, the woman that writes the beast was drunk with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. So this indicates a later time. And even though Jerusalem was involved with the killing of prophets in the past, when it comes to Jesus' name people, the people that were Christian and, and were martyred for serving Jesus, it happens, yes, a little bit in the New Testament, but when after the closing of the New Testament, we see that it was a Roman religion, Roman Catholic religion, that persecuted more Christians than anybody else in the history. You can look it up in Dave Hunt's book, A Woman Writes the Beast, and he challenges anybody to destroy what he's saying. He says, nobody will, and I agree with him. The one who is responsible for all the blood of the martyrs of Jesus is a Roman Catholic Church. Rome, the beast with its seven heads and ten horns, the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast shall hate the whore, shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. There's no way you can get away from Jerusalem being the harlot if you stick to the Bible alone unlike futurism and historicism. And, and God bless those people. Uh, I pray God shows them the truth, but they're not correct when it comes to what these prophecies and revelation are talking about. Now, you just think about this. I'm proposing that the bulk of Revelation from chapter 1 to the end of 19, and we are in Revelation 20, that is all fulfilled from 1 to the end of 19 in the first century. And in Revelation... Uh, 17, 18, you can read where the ten kings were given power with the beast for one hour. And they turn against the, the whore of Babylon and they burn it with fire. But in history, 
when Jerusalem was burned, it wasn't burned by the Ten Kings. Jerusalem was burned by a Roman general who went and, and besieged the city and burned it down to the ground. This is the truth. And then, of all these things, it also says that the, the, these kings will make war with the Lamb, Revelation 17, 14. And they will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will destroy them. So this is something future, because the Lamb didn't come in 70 AD. The Lamb will come again in, in the future. And when He comes back, it will be a tremendous thing. If you believe that Jesus already came, that's your problem. But Jesus has not come back. He came the first time, but He will come up again with glory and power to destroy the wicked kingdom of the Antichrist.